I would invite you now to take a deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out slowly. If you have a watch on, who wears those anymore? But if you do, I invite you to take it off for this hour of worship. If you have a phone, I invite you to turn it off or put it away now. If that makes you very anxious, that's okay. <laughs> Just notice the feeling and give it some thought. As Lent begins, let these simple acts, or maybe not so simple acts, be a sign of the commitment to give ourselves a break, to give ourselves just a moment to catch our breath, to give ourselves time to give God attention. Let us pray a prayer for clearing out, forgiving God. We are not sure we can slow down. Help us make room for you. We have too often crowded you out, too busy even to make a change. Help us find room for you. We come to you wanting to be different. Let us make room for you. In the name of Jesus, who invites us to wholeness. Amen. Will you turn with me to your opening hymn, which is on your insert? <coughs> we'll be singing Before Your Cross, O oh Jesus. to be open to your 
nights in this season to adjust to your tiny corners. In this moment, may we hear God's promise. You can just be you. It's enough. You don't have to perform for God or try to be anybody else except for who God created you to be. God does not ask us to live up to the standards of the world's version of success. We are God's children. God loves us and forgives us. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And this is from the Message Bible. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action. I'm sure play actors, I call them, treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people make a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for... 15 minutes of fame? Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense God's grace. This is the good news of Christ. Tonight we are beginning, we are observing Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of the 40 days before Easter, where we will all come forward and have ashes placed on our heads in the form of a cross. When the ashes are placed on our heads, we will be reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. The 40 days before Easter is a time where we prepare ourselves for the resurrection of Jesus. Now, fasting is the central spiritual practice that is observed during the night. And when we think about fasting, we usually think about what are we giving up for a length, right? Whether it's chocolate or, you know, whatever. It tends to be viewed as, as something negative. What are we giving up? But what if we rethought what the concept of fasting is all about? What if it wasn't so much about giving something up than it is about making room for God? What if we thought about it as living into our truest, fullest self as God has created us to be? During the season of Lent, we will be exploring what it would what it would look like, what it would look like if we all slowed down. What if we fasted from hurry, worry, and being busy? We live in a fast-paced culture where people are constantly busy, on the move. Have we ever thought about what the price is that we are paying to be so busy? During the COVID-19 pandemic, it was observed by many commentators that one of the positive things that they thought 
came out of the pandemic is that people were finally able to slow down. They were forced to because of the restrictions. And during that time, uh, some people talked about the air quality getting better because less people were traveling and flying. Families were able to actually have meals around the dinner tables and spend more time with their kids than they ever had before. Uh, relationships were more connected because we slowed down. But then after the pandemic, as you know, things are beginning to open back up, we've all kind of went back to the way it was before, right? We all are becoming just as busy as we've ever been. Now, ironically, the weekend after Ash Wednesday happens to be the National Day of Unplugging. And that is a movement that says, we are going to commit to unplugging for cell phones, the internet, whatever, TV, electronic device, in order to <coughs> slow down, take time to focus on family and other things, and not allow other things to distract us. Now, when you came in today, you should have gotten a little half sheet that this is put out by the National Day of Unplugging. And it says, I unplug too. And so, just think about when you unplug, what will you fill in the blank? What will you be using that time for instead of watching TV, the internet, cell phone, your iPad, any electronic device you want to unplug from? What will take the, time, the place of the time that you were spending on that electronic device? That's a good one for discipline. For example, I will unplug to take more time to exercise every day. I'm sure we all think that the pastor needs that, right? Spending <laughs> all those times eating cookies and everything. Or spend more time with my kids. In 2007, journalist Carl Otteray gave a TED Talk about a book that he had recently written called In Praise of Slowness. And in this talk, he talks about this, cult, this Western culture that we live in of the need for speed and the need to be fast and in a hurry. He observes that in the world today, instead of just dialing, we speed dial. Instead of just reading, we speed read. Instead of just walking, we speed walk. Instead of just dating, we speed date. There's even a new, what they call speed yoga, which where you can go in and get a quick workout for 15 or 20 minutes if you want one of those in a hurry. Um, there's some sites on YouTube that I found called the Five Minute Seminary, where you can watch this video and it's supposedly it's going to tell you everything about seminary in five minutes. Um, and, you know, one of the downsides of the pandemic is that we did have to make things smaller and shorter and we packaged the things to people online, and that, in a way, is a part of this busy culture. Church is only 25 or 30 minutes online instead of an hour of service. TikTok plays into this as well. That's why I think the thing of it is, I want something fast that could tell me everything in five minutes, the five second <laughs> news uh, clip on TV, the three minute news clip. We want things fast in a hurry. And Carl observes that many times individuals don't even acknowledge that the speed and the busyness of their lives is an issue until they have a relationship that falls apart, they burn out, there's an illness. And Honoré says this happened to him in his relationship with his son. Because one of the things that he just did not like as a father was spending the time to read bedtime stories. So he would read the get through, try to get through his kid's bedtime story as fast as he possibly could. And of course, his son, who had heard the story before, would go back and say, well, Dad, what about the elf or the three dwarves they missed? And so he was at a bookstore, and the book that really caught his eye was the one-minute bedtime story. But he had to kind of step back and think about that for a bit, and he kind of started to feel some guilt. Am I really willing to kind of slough off my son to get through this moment that's important to him in such a hurry? Um, I'm something wrong with me here. So he, that's his wake-up call that he needs to slow down. 
And so he asks the question, why, then, why is it that we have gotten to be so busy? And is it possible to slow down? And he observes that in the West, a lot of this has to do with how we view time. In other cultures, other than our own, especially in the Eastern culture, time is viewed cyclically, like a circle. And there's renewing and refreshing. Whereas in the West, time is viewed linear, linear literally. And uh, time, we view time as short, linear, linear, here we go, we view linear and finite. It's limited. As Benjamin Franklin said, time is money. Time is scarce, so we need to speed up and get things done as fast as we possibly can. And Carl knows though that there's a backlash against this fast-paced culture, and it's been called the slowness movement, where people have advocated for slowing down while you're eating, slowing down in just about every aspect area of your life. Out of this has come the slow food movement, the organic farming movement, and others as well. And researchers have found that when people do slow down, they eat better, they exercise better, and they live better lives. Now, in our scripture reading for today, Jesus is criticizing the religious authorities about how they are practicing their faith. He's not criticizing the practices, he is criticizing how they are being done. Are they being carried out in a way that is life giving for you and for others who are around you? Jesus is a problem with the religions of his day, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the tax collectors, is that he did not think that they were practicing their religion in an intentional way. They were being done for other reasons other than devotion to God. The focus was more about how much work can you be, get done and not about God's grace. Each God isn't looking for us to perform. We do not have to earn God's love. And so the religions of that day were really fixated on work. You have to do enough to earn your place. And Jesus is saying, no, it's actually quite simple. You just have to live the way that God created you to be. Now each one of you were given a slip of paper, a little purple paper, and on that slip of paper, I would like to invite you to think about during this time of Lent, what it is that you could do to slow down. What it is where you could, instead of thinking about it as giving up something for God, in what part of your life can you make room for God? And then when you fill that out with your pen and you come up with the ashes, we have what here is called the God box. And so on top of the God box is the serenity prayer. I'll read it in case some of you. It's a very popular prayer that's the said in Alcoholics Anonymous, and it was actually written by Reinhold Niebuhr, who was a UCC clergyman in the German evangelical part of the United Church of Christ. It goes like this. God give me grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Little simple prayer. And so when you come up to receive the ashes, you will be invited to put your, what you want to give up in there. And then maybe the, this coming up here, we can burn those along with the palms for the ashes. You were created in the image of God. The God that created you is cyclical, like a circle. God renews and refreshes. After God creates in the book of Genesis, God rests. 
which means that we have to take time, just like God does, to slow down, so that we can be renewed and rejuvenated. As you come forward to receive the ashes, remember that you come forward just as you are, and that all you need to do is live as God has created you to live. Let us simply and honestly be present during this Lenten season. We begin by repenting, which means to turn around from unrealistic expectations and false beliefs. Amen.
Now let us go to God in prayer. Up here we have what I call the prayer chair. And I would encourage you all to find a, a nice, comfortable chair at home where you can uh, get quiet, center yourself. I myself like a good rocking chair. So that's where we'll pray for this season of Lent. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your grace and for accepting us just as we are. Help us to live into those patterns of life that you have created for us. To always spend time, make time, to slow down and to take a Sabbath day so that we can be renewed and rejuvenated. Lord, we lift up all those to you who are suffering in this world, the conflicts in Ukraine and Russia. Lord, help us to be the instruments of peace that you've called us to be, to be a visible demonstration that slowness is good, that perhaps the church is a place where one can slow down and center upon God, place of rest and rejuvenation. And now as Christians we pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray by boldly saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. As we forgive our sins, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, I... 
already went through that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So we're going now turn to our in take time to be holy on the insert. <laughs> Yeah. 